everyone grumbled. The sky was grey. We had nothing to do and nothing to say. We were nearing the end of a dismal day. And there seemed to be nothing beyond. Then, Daddy fell into the pond! And everyone's face grew merry and bright, and Timothy danced for sheer delight. Give me the camera, quick, oh quick! He's crawling out of the duckweed! Click! And the gardener suddenly slapped his knee and doubled up, shaking silently, and the ducks all quacked as if they were daft, and his sound as if the old drake laughed. Oh, there wasn't a thing that didn't respond when Daddy fell into the pond. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to this Oak Tree English poetry time. I've, uh, I'm aiming this at my younger fans. The younger audience clearly needed some poems, so here are some poems tailor-made for you. Uh, that one was by Alfred Noyes and it was called When Daddy Fell Into the Pond. Alfred Noyes is famous for another poem called The Highwayman, which you may have heard before. And if you haven't, look it up. It's awesome. Now we're going to go with Robert Louis Stevenson. That's the guy who wrote Treasure Island. And we're going to read his poem From a Railway Carriage. Faster than fairies, faster than witches, bridges and houses, hedges and ditches, and charging along like troops in a battle, all through the meadows, the horses and cattle, all of the sights of the hill and the plain, fly as thick as the driving rain, and ever again in the wink of an eye, painted stations whistle by, here's a child who clambers and scrambles, all by himself and gathering brambles, here's a tramp who stands and gazes, and here's the green for stringing the daisies, Here's a cart run away in the road, lumping along with man and load. And here is a mill, and there is a river, each a glimpse, and gone forever. At the beginning, that mentions fairies, fairies faster than fairies. Very many people imagine fairies to be like Ben and Holly. I like Ben and Holly. Uh, but the imagination of fairies in... Uh, times past by people such as William Ollingham was very different. Fairies were not considered to be nice people. In fact, they were to be feared. So here I go. This is called The Fairies by William Orlington. Up the airy mountain, down the rushy glen, we daren't go a-hunting a fear of little men. We folk, good folk, trooping all together. Green jacket, red cap, and white owl's feather. Down along the rocky shore, some make their home. They live on crispy pancakes of t yellow tide foam. Some in the reeds of the black mountain lake, with frogs for their watchdog, all night awake. High on the hilltop, the old king sits. He is now so old and grey, he's nigh lost his wits. With a bridge of white mist, Columcale he crosses, On his stately journeys from Sleeve League to Rosses, Or going up with the music on cold starry nights, To sup with the queen of the gay northern lights. They stole little Bridget for seven years long, When she came down again her friends were all gone. They took her lightly back between the night and morrow. They thought that she was fast asleep, but she was dead with sorrow. They have kept her ever since deep within the lake, on a bed of fig leaves, watching till she wake. By the craggy hillside, through the mosses bare, they have planted thorn trees for my pleasure here and there. Is any man so daring as to dig them up in spite? He shall find their sharpest thorns in his bed at night. Up the airy mountain, down the rushy glen, We daren't go a-hunting for fear of little men. We folk, 
good folk trooping all together, green jacket, red cap, and white owl's feather. Now, we're going to turn to another poet you might have heard of, Lewis Carroll. Lewis Carroll was a maths teacher at Oxford University uh, at Christchurch, and he uh, had, a, had a friend who was the nanny of a girl called Alice Liddell, and he spent a lot of time with Alice Liddell uh, in, the, um, in his friendship with her governess. And he wrote her a book, a quite a famous book, known as Alice in Wonderland. This is a poem that is, uh, I'm not sure whether it's in Wonderland or Through the Looking Glass, but it's the sort of thing that the Mad Hacker, Hatter might wear. So I'm wearing a Mad Hatter hat to keep you, um, to keep you entertained. This is called Jabberwocky. Twas brillig. And the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the borough groves, and the momraths outgrave. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jug jug bird, and shun the frumious bandersnatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand. Long time the manxome foe he sought. So rested he by the tum-tum tree, And stood a while in thought. And as in uffish thought he stood, The Jabberwock, with eyes of flame, Came whiffling through the tulgy wood, And burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through, The vorpal blade went snicker-snack. He left it dead. And with his head, he went galumphing back. And hast thou slain the Jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy. O oh, fratious day, Kalu Calais, he chortled in his joy. Twas brillig, and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wabe. All mimsy were the borough groves, and the momrath. <laughs> now, let's turn to A. A. Milne. A. A. Milne, most famous, of course, for uh, writing Winnie the Pooh. He also wrote a number of poems. Uh, he also wrote a number of plays. But the, this is one of his poems from uh, a book called More A. A. Milne. Um, and it's called Now We Are Six. You, for this, you have to get into the mindset of a six-year-old child. I have no hat for a six-year-old child, therefore I'm just going to be me. When I was ya one, I had just begun. When I was two, I was nearly new. When I was three, I was hardly me. When I was four, I was not much more. When I was five, I was just alive. But now I'm six, and as clever as clever. So I think I'll be six now, forever and ever. <laughs> and we finally turn to Father William. This is not a way to treat your elders. Children, do not speak to your father or your grandfather or anyone else like this uh, and always treat them with respect because they've been alive longer than you. This is Father William. You are old, Father William, the young man said, and your hair has become very white, and yet you incessantly stand on your head. Do you think at your age it is right? In my youth, Father William replied to his son, I feared it would injure the brain. But now that I'm perfectly sure I have none, why I do it again and again. You are old, said the youth. As I mentioned before, I'd have grown most uncommonly 
bat. Yet you turned a back somersault in at the door. Pray, what is the reason of that? In my youth, said the sage, as he shook his grey locks, I kept all my limbs very supple. By the use of this ointment, one shilling the box, allow me to sell you a couple. You are old, said the youth, and your jaws are too weak for anything tougher than suet. Yet you finished the goose with the bones and the beak. Pray, how did you manage to do it? In my youth, said his father, I talked to the law, and I argued each case with my wife, and the muscular strength which it gave to my jaw has lasted the rest of my life. You are old, said the youth. One would hardly suppose that your eye was as steady as ever. Yet you balanced an eel on the end of your nose. What made you so awfully clever? I have answered three questions, and that is enough, said his father. Don't give yourself airs. Do you think I can listen all day to such stuff? Be off, or I'll kick you downstairs. <laughs> As I said, children, please do not speak to your elders like that. And if you uh, want to learn interesting things about the world around you, please talk to people, um, to, to elderly people, because they are very, very interesting. They, each one contains an enormous amount of history, which they just would love to tell you about. So do take, if you get the chance, go to an old folks home, talk to some of the residents, uh, or just talk to some, um, some friendly old people at your local church, ask them questions about what life was like when they were younger. Because I tell you what, you will learn so much and you will your, your life will be considerably better for it. There's my parting shot. Thank you very much for joining me here. Uh, if you have enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, Oak Tree English. And if you, uh, if you would like to um, be notified of when I post more videos, please click the little bell icon. And if you have enjoyed this so much that you want to share it with your friends, please be my guest. Share it with all of your friends. Uh, and don't forget to like the video. All of these things help to, uh, to spread, the, uh, spread the poetry. And that's always a good thing. Thank you very much for joining me. And uh, have a great day. Goodbye.